Here be monsters, of course, because in the hallowed halls of literature, nothing spells resounding save the world triumph like lopping off the head of the biggest, baddest baddie in the valley just before the clock ticks midnight and the evil villain's plan finally comes to fruition. Yada, yada, yada. You get the picture. You know how it goes. The point is, in horror, countless writers have made it their life's work in an attempt to waylay the archetypal evil villain by penning some of the most horrifying monstrosities that the human mind can manage to muster. Some of them have failed horribly, but for the most part, the arsenal of terrifying monsters in literature is looking pretty damn full. So, I guess we better take another look. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today, we curiously take a look at the top five most terrifying monsters in literature, part two. Roll the clip. <laughs> For the curious amongst you, that scene was of course the Losers Club facing down Bill Skarsgård version of Pennywise the Dancing Clown, which if you're asking me is perhaps one of the most terrifying monsters ever penned in literature, particularly for chorophobes or anyone of a fearful disposition for all consuming eldritch entities, which should be all of us really. But it leads us to the same point that we laid on in the first part of this series. We're trying to keep this list as fresh as possible, so like before with the masses of monstrosities, no King, no Lovecraft and no Barker. Let's jump into it. Kicking off at number five, The Dementors, Harry Potter. And while some of you may find umbrage with this placement, see what I did there? There is no denying the fact that for a series of children's novels, the incredible JK Rowling had a particular penchant for creating some downright terrifying magical creatures. And despite the very human horror that is present in the series, the Dementors are at the tip top of the all evil magical entities pile. And actually, when we look back at these villainous race with the eyes of an adult, there's surprisingly more horror to be found behind their wispy form, particularly when we take into account the recently expanded Harry Potter universe. For those of you that don't know, in the wizarding world, a Dementor is a glide wraith-like creature that feeds purely on human happiness, draining them of all joy and life, and only leaving behind emotions of pure depression and despair. If given long enough exposure, they can fully consume a person's soul, leaving them in a permanent vegetative state. In the Harry Potter canon, although featuring heavily during the dark, dark times of Lord Voldemort, the Dementors are inexplicably tied to one location, the prison of Azkaban. And here's where the real world allegory makes things much more terrifying from a different kind kind of perspective. The desolate island prison in the North Sea, Azkaban, was supposedly created by a wizard named Acrisidus, who practiced the most terrible and evil kinds of dark magic, where he'd lure muggle sailors to his island purely for the sake of torturing them and then feeding off their misery. After he died and the charms concealing his torturous island wore off, the Ministry of Magic eventually became aware of the place, where they discovered all kinds of unspeakable horrors, the main ones being an entire colony of these evil wraith-like dementors. And what did they do? Shut it away, locked it up, and port hold the key into space? Nah, they decided they'd cut municipal wizarding costs and use the place as a prison. Good job. Coming in at number four, the Yerks, Animorphs. And if you read the Animal series written by K.A. Applegate and Michael Grant, you'll know that the insanely long run, which consisted of 54 books, wasn't exactly the charming, body morphing, young adult story that it was made out to be, particularly at the end of the series, where things just got way, way out of hand. And despite the subsequent murder and existential crises that followed, the most vile and disgusting foil to these young shapeshifters were the Yerks, a grotesque, parasitic species of alien, slug like creatures that infected the most appropriate host species to do their bidding. Over the course of the series, it's revealed that these otherwise useless slugs have pretty much taken over the entire galaxy, and their sights finally turn to the buffet of humans on offer that had no idea what was coming for them. In their natural state, yurks resemble large slugs and live in huge lakes of sludge known as yurk pools, which, you know, is pretty gross and would be a pretty unfortunate place to go skinny dipping. Yurks have the ability to enter their host body through the ear canal, where they subsequently take over all brain functions, including basic motor and speech control and thus essentially become that person. Which, as you may imagine, comes into all kinds of calamity for the five anamorphic heroes who are just trying to figure out how the hell they can stop accidentally morphing into an iguana whilst also getting forced into an intergalactic war that will result in the destruction of all mankind. Yeah, Animorphs isn't just a book about kids with lizard tongues, it covers some incredibly weighty themes, all of which are orchestrated by the evil, gross slug empire of the Yerks. More like jerks. Go bitch! Go 
Next up at number 3, the Nickelheads, the Dresden Files. Otherwise known as the hosts of the Denarians, which are also otherwise known as the Order of the Blackened Denarius or the Fallen. Yeah, although the Nagloshi of Jim Butcher's Dresden Files featured in our previous list, perhaps the most prime evil of the entire series are the 30 ancient coins that underpin Harry Dresden's save the world and ask questions later kind of vibe. And if you're wondering as to why 30 weird coins are terrifying, it may take a little bit of explaining to do first, so stick with me. Throughout the events of the Dresden Files, Harry deals with some pretty powerful entities. Entities, but the most powerful of those are the Denarii, a race of fallen angels that are contained within 30 ancient silver coins, which are said to be the silver pieces given to Judas Iscariot in exchange for his betrayal of Jesus, which is an awesome concept, but hey. That's Jim Butcher for you. Whoever touches these coins with their open flesh is forever tainted and given the power of the fallen angels within, consuming them as their host. Usually the fallen will lead their chosen mortal deeper into its influence through whispered promises of greatness, slowly corrupted both their soul and their mind and bestowing incredible powers of various phenomena. In the series, perhaps the most iconic and equally terrifying denarian is Anduriel, who has taken the villainous Nicodemus Arch alone as its host for over 2,000 years, orchestrating the chaotic order of the Black and Denarius by sowing discord in the mortal world, using all other denizens of the world as his playthings to seemingly play dice with the ultimate fate of humanity. Yeah, the Denarius are an awesome and unique horror concept, and they're equally terrifying because of it. Swinging in at number two, Slake Moss, Panido Street Station, which for those of you that don't know is an awesome novel, as well as the setup to the equally awesome Bass Lag series written by China Mieville, who created a world of such strange intrigue in a hodgepodge of sci fi, fantasy, in horror, filled to the brim with more strange bird men and giant brain slugs than any horror fan could ever hope for. But all of them pale in comparison to the horrifying mechanics of Mieville's most terrifying creation, the Slake Moths, a species of insectoid creatures that are first given birth to in Perdido Street Station and serve to be the worthy, evil, mind bending cosmic horror force throughout the novel's duration. I'll try not to spoil any of the plot points because Perdido Street Station is really worth the read, but the first Slake Moth is inadvertently created by the novel's protagonist, Isaac, a scientist who stumbles upon a strange species of bulbous caterpillar stolen from the criminal underworld, which inadvertently seems to feast on all manners of hallucinogenic drugs. In particular, the larvae has a hunger for a substance known as dream sh which turns out is exactly what it says on the tin, and soon enough the gross pupae transforms into a horrendous, cosmically horrifying giant moth that quickly reveals all manners of terrifying truths, particularly involving the world of underground drug smuggling. Mieville's prose is reason enough to read why the slate moths are as terrifying as I'm making out, but for a creature as unassuming as a moth, he really turns up the cosmic horror dial, and these creatures are more akin to Lovecraftian fiction than they may first seem. Give it a read. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the Shrike, the Hyperion Cantos. And many of you guys called for this terrifying monster of literature to appear on our list, and rightfully so, making its way to our number one spot in a temporally insignificant manner, just to impale us all on its Shrike tree. Now, the Hyperion Cantos, written by Dan Simmons and first released in 1989, is an incredibly worthy entry into the halls of legendary science fiction. Believe me, these books are weighty, and they cover some of the most grandiose themes in the whole of the genre, most of which I'll try not to bog you down with, because there's all manner of time travel and galaxy spanning hegemonies of mankind, but just know that all of those pale in comparison to the terrifying creature known only as the Shrike, a being of such incredible power and strength, daunting stature and all-consuming evil that it's more akin to the legendary folk tales of old than it is to the world of science fiction. Although for those of you that haven't read the series, the true nature of the Shrike is uncontested spoiler territory, but there's just so much of this monstrosity that we'd perhaps be better off trying to find out why it isn't terrifying. The exact origins of the Shrike are unclear, but it appears as a roughly humanoid entity over three meters in height, covered in a spiked carapace of chrome steel. It has four violent arms and four equally violent hands that are tipped with scalpel-like finger blades, of which even Freddy Krueger himself would be weary of. Essentially, the strike is as if Shelob was somehow genetically blended with the Terminator and then mutated over millennia into every Doctor Who villain imaginable, where it then decided to live in the grim darkness of Warhammer 40k to cut its teeth on all of the unimaginable horrors of the Void. Oh, and speaking of voids, not only does the strike want to impale you on its tree of pain, it can also travel through temporal space to do so, appearing out of thin air to slaughter you in a swipe of razor sharp steel. And that's without us even talking about the narrative significance of the Shrike. Yeah, it's our number one spot 
Easy. Well, there we have it, folks. Our list for the top five most terrifying monsters in literature. Part two. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any more entries to add? Then let us know your choice picks or your own top five lists down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Chips and Dip says, if your Insta is two coats, Jack, where are your two coats? <sighs> well, it's summer. What the hell? I can barely wear a t-shirt in this heat, let alone two coats. Give me a break. Gareth Penderbury says, just downloaded the name of the wind on your recommendation. Best be good. And while that is sweet edema room music to my ears, Gareth, trust me, you've made a solid, solid investment. Let me know what you think. On that note, horror fans, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, please take it easy.